when you think of third parties in the United States, Libertarian and Green, the Libertarian Party always does way better than mm-hmm. the Green Party. And they got 1.2 percent, dude. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me that his ceiling is uh, like what? I mean, freaking more than half of that. A so- dude on YouTube who just laughs at himself <laughs> and just drinks himself into like a stupor every night and just says crazy <laughs> shit. With a million subscribers on YouTube is going to get has a ceiling of 0.7 percent. Are you serious right now, dude? It really feels as if this week we got definitive proof that the gods are real and they bestowed upon us a gift that we will cherish for all of eternity because this gift will produce the best memes in the history of the internet and i cannot wait to see what happens i'm of course referring to the fact that um jimmy Dore might be running for president in 2024 <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, I just want to say that I unequivocally endorse this move, not his campaign, to be clear. I do not endorse him, but I endorse his decision to potentially run for president because, I mean, goddamn, that would be the most incoherent platform we've ever seen. Um, So I'm going to read this uh, press release. This is from Movement for a People's Party. So apparently he would run under their banner and would be their first candidate to run, apparently. Um, So this was released yesterday, and I haven't read this full press release uh, yet. So um, apparently it's not a final decision, but this is just something. It's I guess this is like a pseudo draft Jimmy campaign. Uh, And I'm all for it. I I unequivocally, unconditionally support this. I want him to run for president. Uh, It's a dark time in America and it's getting worse. Agree. Millions lack food and health care and live paycheck to paycheck. Poverty wages now gutted by inflation. I love how they're talking about all this substance. Meanwhile, uh, movement for a people's party is essentially doing shit like this. People who menstruate seriously sounds like NPR wants to cancel women. They deleted this tweet, but thankfully Jacqueline saved it. Um, And and by the way, if you click on this article, it goes to an NPR piece that has women in the headline. But this is what they're doing. They're pretending that they're all about that substance, when in actuality, they're pandering to reactionaries. Uh, Eviction and homelessness sweep every city. Desperation so deep it drives people to opioid addiction and mass murder-suicide. The looming fall of the dollar and depression, a dying empire lashing out for war with not one but two nuclear powers, the major left-wing party in this country leading the charge for annihilation and censorship. Okay, first of all, we don't have a left-wing party in this country. We have two right-wing parties. One is a just typical conservative party. The other is a far-right, batshit insane death cult. Now, to my understanding, I don't know what the platform is, but these individuals like Nick Brana, Jimmy Dore, they embrace elements of the death cult. Anti-vax, vehemently so, but yet pro-Medicare for all when vaccines are part of healthcare. It's just ideologically inco- inconsistent. But um, either way, they're, they're raising serious issues here. But what exactly is the solution? Door 24. It has a nice ring to it, admittedly. But um, I just... I'll, I'll reserve... I'll, res- I'll try to reserve my judgment until I, I hear them out first, okay? Thankfully, I and many others have recently found a real hope and joy in the prospect that Jimmy Dore could run for president of the United States. Jimmy has been considering a run for president with the People's Party for the past several weeks. We've been discussing it with him and Steph and have developed a 50-state campaign and ballot access plan with organizers and leading ballot access attorneys. So they're serious about this, right? And they had to have spoken with Jimmy before making this press release. I don't know how this conversation went, but it's probably like, Hey, Jimmy, you should run for president. And then Steph goes, ha, <laughs> and laughs really hard. And Jimmy's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then they start talking. There always has to be like a fake laugh. Even when it's completely inappropriate, they have to drop that in somehow. And that's why, that's why we need you to run for president. Ha! You've been bringing it up on this show. And I have saw you talk about it with Chris Hedges. And I saw you talk about it with Jackson right here. And you know what Caleb Moppin said? 
Orger King. He said that would be a real political game changer. And you know what Orf said? Uh, Our friend Matt Orfalea? I thought Kyle Caleb Maupin said, I wanted to take away your capitalistic gains. <laughs> what, did, what did Orf say? He said that it is a once in a multi lifetime opportunity. And you know who I spoke to just two days ago? Oh, don't tell me. The GOAT. Ralph Nader. Yeah, you want me to end up like Ralph Nader? Ralph Nader. Oh, no. I don't think so, though. And Ralph (laughs) doesn't think you'll end up like Ralph Nader. I wouldn't. But um, because I have the gift of humor. The crowds in Des Moines, Omaha, and Kansas City erupted in cheers when Jimmy surprised everyone at his live stand-up shows last month and said, I'm thinking of running for president, and took town hall-style questions for the first time. That's what you're basing this off of for reals? Holy fuck. That weekend, Jackson Hinkle told him he should run for president live on Jimmy's show. Well, there's one endorsement, so I mean, I guess that you should run based on that. If somebody in the chat tells me to run for president, I'll take that as evidence that there is a desire, and I may need to fill that gap. Uh, Live on Jimmy's show, and Jimmy said he's considering it. Then Jimmy asked Chris Hedges what would happen if he runs for president or if he was to run for president on the air. And on June 3rd, I joined Jimmy and Steph in studio and told them uh, and all of their supporters why he needs to run. We discussed it for the last half of the segment with Jackson and and Kurt Metzger weighing in. The next day, Jimmy uploaded the whole conversation to YouTube. So he's taking it serious. He put that on YouTube. Oh, this this is getting really serious. Jimmy would be the most popular comedian to ever run for president. He would be the first candidate with his own hugely popular online show, something that has only just now become possible due to the rise of the internet and independent media. Okay, I mean, is that, has there never been another comedian to run for president? Because this would unironically be the most hilarious thing Jimmy Dore has ever done in his career as a comedian. So, um, there's that. We believe... That Jimmy could win. No, you do not, bitch. You do not believe that Jimmy Dore can win. Are you fucking kidding me? You know how uh, Bernie Sanders ran twice and didn't win? You know how Tulsi Gabbard, their idol, ran for uh, president and got like, what was it, two pledged delegates? Fuck all that. Jimmy Dore, he can win by joking his way to the White House, running on an unapologetic message of Medicare for all, transphobia, and banning vaccine mandates. His campaign tour could be even more incredible, potentially with figures like Chris Hedges, Cornel West, Susan Sarandon, Anna Parampil, I'm not sure who that is, Max Blumenthal, Chris Smalls, Medea Benjamin, Jackson Hinkle, Richard Wolff, and Aaron Maté joining him on the road and in what is sure to be the most revolutionary White House cabinet in the history of this country. I don't think that people understand. Like, this is really when you're too far in your bubble where you think that this YouTube show, this relatively large but still small than the grand scheme of U.S. politics show, this is not, like, indicative of the entire population. Has Jimmy Dore ever organized anything in his life besides, like, uh, force the vote? Has he actually, like, organized on the ground? Like, Movement for a People's Party has these chapters of people who are actually really well-intentioned, and then the national organization keeps fucking them over, keeps denying them resources. This has been covered on Status Quo. It's been covered by other outlets. So the fact that they, like, are saying he could actually win, win is, um, if they think that he can win legitimately, they're either delusional, but I think that really what this is about is a grift. I think this would be a money-making scheme to put money into the People's Party coffers, who does not have a lot of money, uh, comparatively speaking, for a national political party. Hence the reason why they can't really field any candidates. Because if you don't have money to support a congressional campaign, then what the fuck are you supposed to do? You're going to lose, right? You're already disadvantaged if you're not running in one of the two major parties. Hence the need for electoral reform, which is not on their platform last time I checked. But, I mean, if you're going to really be serious about uh, building a political movement and a political party more specifically, why don't you start at the local level, right? If I'm, if I'm starting a new, uh, a new party and I want it to be an actual competitor in the U.S. political space, we don't start at the fucking presidential level. You start locally. This is what the Green Party did. The Green Party, they start locally. They field candidates at the local level, the state level, and they run 
a uh, presidential candidate, but that's usually because in a lot of areas, you can't actually get on the ballot unless you have somebody at the top of the ticket. But the Green Party is constantly fielding local candidates, and they win a lot of local elections. But they're just straight, straight up starting with the fucking presidential election. Holy shit. He could fight for the end to homelessness, expanded social security, an end to job killing trade deals, free public college, a jobs guarantee, abolishing, uh, abolishing mass incarceration, free speech or nationalization for every social media platform, public funding of elections and a multi-party system with ranked choice voting and proportional representation. You know, this is what you have to start with first, though. That's the thing. If you want a multi-party system, and I've had conversations with Jimmy Dore about this uh, in person, and I've explained how, look, I want a third party, I want a fourth party, I want multiple parties, but you literally have to push for uh, proportional representation first. You can't just run as an outsider and then institute proportional representation. It takes a lot of time to build up support for this. And do you want to know a candidate that actually was in favor of proportional representation? Nina Turner. He shit on Nina Turner, somebody who literally is in favor of electoral reform so that way an independent or third-party presidential candidate could be possible. Jimmy Dore shit on her. He was relentless. I never thought I would believe in someone again like I had believed in Bernie until I got to know Jimmy, and that's why Jimmy Dore should run for president because so many thousands of us who thought we would uh, never believe in anyone again believe in him. Everywhere Jimmy goes, people tell him that he keeps them sane. Hmm. I mean, who are these people? Because he's completely insane himself, conspiracy mongering, anti-vax, dumb fuckery, more generally speaking, laughing at his own jokes. So if that keeps you sane, I don't know if you were ever attached to reality in the first place. Uh, everywhere they bring him thoughtful personal gifts as a token of their appreciation. There's only one other person I've ever seen inspire that kind of support and hope. They call us nihilists and say we believe in nothing, but they're wrong. We believe in Jimmy's integrity. We believe in his outrage. And we believe that with him and Steph, we can change this country. But what is the actual platform? Like, you named some things. But who the fuck exactly are you supposed to appeal to? Because Jimmy Dore's whole audience is like far-right MAGA chuds now. So he's going to run for president in 2024 against Trump, who his audience supports, against DeSantis, who his audience supports. How's that going to work? <laughs> so in a national election in a biden versus trump versus door race i think jimmy door could honestly pull in probably 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 percent of the national vote which is huge right assuming he's able to get in the ballot on all 50 states if not perhaps less but 0 0.7 percent that's what we're looking at folks I mean, if Kanye West couldn't break 1%, if you think that Jimmy Dore can break 1%, you're just delusional. You're fucking delusional. Uh, you actually think 0.7% national vote is his ceiling. Are you fucking insane? Not even close to 0.1%. 0, 0. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm 100% wrong. Let's, you should hop on and we'll, we should debate this, Sahil. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. You think I'm way too optimistic about Jimmy Dore with his ceiling. So I said this ultimate ceiling, and this is like being very, very charitable, Max, 0.7% nationally. That's almost not a percent, but 0.7%. And I'll make my case. So that's not his fan base. His fan base would be like 0.7%. 0.001% of the entire population. But just if he can get on the Wait, ballot. Repeat that? Repeat that? Wait, what was the number? 0 0.01? Uh, zero. So his, just if I could like quantify his fan base, I'd say it's million subscribers, Tucker Carlson viewers, Joe Rogan viewers. His probably fan base is like 0.001% of the US voting population. I mean, if we like, if we just take the numbers, like there's what, 350. I mean the what is hold on what is the voting population right now? Hold on, I need to look it up. So the eligible. So are we gonna go with the eligible to vote? Or are we gonna go with the people who actually submitted ballots? I would go with um, I would go with eligible to vote. Um, the and you base that off of, to my understanding, if they're still doing it correctly, whoever voted in the last two elections. So just from the Wikipedia one, the first thing that comes up for the 2020 presidential election is 240 million people eligible to vote. 
Mm, okay. And so he has 1 million subscribers. So assuming that all of them vote, which probably not all of them vote, it might be a little bit charitable to say that his, his audience represents 0.001. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but here's overall, like assuming everyone has, in his audience votes for him, I think that he could max out at 0.7% of the population if there isn't a, a you know an exciting green candidate option if the libertarian is another Gary Johnson and I'm adding some caveats so you can say that I'm kind of like finessing my my uh, my number a little bit and fluffing it up but I, I think that 0.7 percent is definitely a possibility but it's unlikely realistically I think that you would probably be more correct where it'd be like 0.1 two percent but uh, but let's hear it i, I want to hear your case though okay so you're saying out of the potential people to vote he would get actually his ceiling is 0.7 percent so seven tenths of a percentage point right mm -hmm. um what did kanye west get in the last election you that i don't know curious. that's a good comparison though right so we have a control figure here i mean yes. obviously jimmy is george is not going to get as much as kanye right i mean there's no way i mean he's and the also, most popular comedian in the history of presidential campaign uh, sahil so <laughs> I don't know what that's going to end. Oh, so Kanye, wait. It's saying here, did Howie Hawkins only get 0.3%? Do you think that's accurate? That sounds accurate, yeah. And then G Joe Jorgensen only got 1.2%? Okay, I mean, <laughs> come on now. Let, see, this is what I'm talking about, bro. If the libertarian candidate, Joe Jorgensen, these are like the, when you think of third parties in the United States, libertarian and green, the libertarian party always does way better than mm -hmm. the green party. And they got 1.2 percent, dude. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that his ceiling is, uh, like what? I mean, freaking more than half of that. A so dude on YouTube <laughs> who just laughs at himself and just drinks himself into like a stupor every night and just says crazy <laughs> shit. With a million subscribers on YouTube mm. is gonna get has a ceiling of 0.7 percent. Are you serious right now, dude? Okay, so are you serious? Other things to consider. Other things to consider. Okay, so. He makes this announcement. Tucker Carlson brings him on the program. Joe Rogan brings him on the program. Then oh, you have God. a bunch of other different fan bases potentially voting for him. Another another difference, though, is if you look at the 2016 numbers, it was higher for the Libertarian and the Green Party. I think Joe Stein hit almost 1% and Johnson was like 2 or 3%. Yeah, so yeah. this kind of election would probably reflect that election more because last election, Trump was in power, so it was kind of a get him out, yeah, anti-Trump yeah. vote. Whereas this one is more of a return to, okay, the Democrats have failed, I'm unenthusiastic. Yeah. Um, so keeping that in mind, it's possible. Now, again, I want to stress that I don't think, my prediction is not that he would get 0.7%. It's that that's like the ceiling, best case scenario, with the stars aligned, with, you know, um, magical spells in use um everything but more likely he's gonna land a lot closer to what you're saying most likely i'm willing I'm to concede that ceiling is a tenth of a percentage point that's a ceiling but even that i think is going to be really hard to get because mm -hmm. even though you're talking about i don't it doesn't i just don't really think it matters um if he goes on joe rogan's podcast or whoever i just don't think he's going to get many voters i just mm -hmm. don't i mean on joe rogan's podcast it's either going to be people who are just democrats or for the most part it's obviously going to be exceptions but for the most part it'll be people who are either you know they're liberal or whatever or or they're just straight up trump voters i mean tons of yeah. joe rogan's fans are just trump voters they're not going to vote for jimmy Dore. there's just no way mm -hmm. um but any of those platforms that he could get access to i mean there's no way that those are like bigger than, um, you know, like the Green Party. I mean, like, mm -hmm. come on, like, yeah, the Greens got 1.07 percent, and then the Libertarians got 3.28. So it probably will be more similar to those numbers than the 2020 2020 mm -hmm. numbers. I agree with you on that. Um, but I just don't see like all the Green Party. But the Green Party has 44 states ballot access. This is another huge point that I mm -hmm. have to bring up. Is that He's not like he's running. He's not. Not only is he not running as a Democrat or Republican, he's not even running in an established uh, third party. <laughs> right. Established third parties are Libertarian and Green. Green has 44 in D.C. for ballot access. Libertarian has 50 in D.C. So 
How much mm-hmm. ballot access does this shitty ass movement for a People's Party have for President of the United States? It seems uh, this is what I'm thinking because they said that they have ballot access lawyers. So every single election cycle, the Green Party has to spend so much money on lawyers for the ballot every single time. Like, it's not like you get on the ballot and then you've made it. You're done every election. This is a constant battle. So what's probably going to have to happen is he'd get on the ballot in maybe two states if he's lucky, and then it'll just have to be a write-in campaign, right? Like, that's the only way that you could feasibly do this. Because the goal itself, like, we, I think that it's, it's evident that the goal isn't to make Jimmy president, even though that's what they're saying. The goal is to get money to the Green Party, um, not the Green Party. Or n- the, the Movement for a People's Party. Yeah, sorry. They yeah. obviously don't give a crap about Jimmy being president. They just want to bolster the People's Party. That's what they want. To yeah, do. it's it's so transparent. And I feel yeah. bad because I still see, like, I know people, um, like, who do volunteer work for the People's Party who don't really understand uh, the dynamics of what that is, whereas it's just, like, a fucking a grift. I like. I, I honestly don't even know what the purpose of it is because they haven't ran a single candidate. Um, but oh, they haven't nowhere. I didn't even know that. Not a single candidate. And, and like, we're not even talking like fucking congressional candidates. Like, you would start at the local level. That's easy. If you want to yeah, actually yeah. run and win like a city council race, you can do that with like ten grand. Honestly, if you organize right. Um. But they haven't even done that. So Jimmy would technically, assuming they don't run anyone else, be their first candidate, which is yeah, kind so of bizarre. That, that just goes to show again just how unserious they are. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't start out your first run as a presidential campaign. Yeah. That's completely – that's legitimately – I mean I don't even know what word to call that. I mean <laughs> that is just – that is just – it's just – completely delusional to think you're not even starting out with like a house race like a federal house race you're jumping straight up straight to the it. top baby <laughs> dude the green party has never ever in its history ever had a federal uh, representative of any kind right never house or Senate? no think about that think about what i just told you the green party right ralph nader all be like pretty well known mm-hmm. and they haven't got a single one and jimmy george is gonna jump in the race for president of the united states <laughs> are you serious and that's their first run that alone should disqualify their entire organization mm-hmm. to, to me that's that shows you're not even in good faith like you're just bad faith entirely because like if you really wanted to do it yeah you would start out with council race or I mean, shoot, if you started out with like house races, which that that wouldn't like that wouldn't work. But at least it's like at least it gives you like plausibility of like, oh, we we're trying. Mm-hmm. We're running in house races. Yeah. We're running for president of the United States. But I think it's just like they see this is the tough part about getting elected in the United States. Right. Or just I guess anywhere. It's like if you run in a federal race, your votes are going to be completely drowned out. You're going to get destroyed, right? Because it's like it's a statewide race, mm-hmm. not a federal election, but, uh, you know, like a presidential election in this case. Um, there's just too many votes. You're just going to get swamped. But it's like if you go into a district, how many how many Jimmy Dore voters live in Jimmy Dore's district? Probably like <laughs> two, ten, a hundred <laughs> max. So it's like you, you can't get marginalized in your district because there's too few people, but you don't have enough fans. You can boost your raw number of votes in like a, a countrywide election or even a statewide election, but you're yeah. still going to get like just completely smashed.